Briefly, it seemed like a YouTuber and beauty mogul Jeffree Star was living quietly away from the spotlight on his newly acquired Wyoming ranch where he keeps his beloved yaks. But controversy just caught up to him when it was discovered that only the prettiest and most virile yaks end up as one of his pampered pets. While the rest are unceremoniously ground up and sold as meat from the Star Yak Ranch, where Jeffrey recently told a podcast that he keeps, quote, around 100 guns, and he is, quote, waiting for someone to trespass, presumably so he can shoot them dead, like they were one of his yaks with a lazy eye. Collecting guns, living in Wyoming, and standing your ground? It's giving gay Republican vibes, Jeffrey, and that makes me want a yak. In fact, I was just pointing out a little bit of Jeffrey. Jeffree Star's perceived hypocrisy when he blocked me on Twitter. Now how will I know how many tiny inbred dogs he has pissing all over his carpet? I guess I can just check out his latest YouTube upload, The Truth About the Star Yak Ranch. To witness his love of all animals, both dead and alive, depending on which one is worth more money. We'll also see his convoluted PR deflections, Jeffrey talking about animal rights activists like they're idiots, and presumably the smell of manure soaking in into an Adidas tracksuit. Grab some A1 steak sauce for a very merry and meaty installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web so we can look each gift yak in the mouth and decide is that pretty pretty and will be my pet or is that going to be used for breeding and butchering and sent off to the slaughterhouse. Mom, dad, everyone's killing animals out in Wyoming. That's what it would seem because Jeffrey explains in this video that that's just the Wyoming way. I think Jeffrey obviously was making this video to get ahead of what sort of seemed like a leaked announcement. Someone on Reddit posted a picture that I saw of the Star Yak Ranch meat, which obviously gave people plenty of room to assume that these animals Jeffrey had described as beautiful creatures in a previous post were now being sent off for mail order meat purposes. So after after all of that drama, Jeffrey also posted on Twitter, I think like a vague thing about how, you know, people need to mind their own business or like people who are getting involved who don't matter. And I was just pointing out that that's what he was famous for doing like a year ago. And that's when he blocked me. But I mean, you can't block me from saying your name in real life, Jeffree Star. So let's go into the reasoning behind Jeffree Star starting a meat business in his explanation video. Explanation video. And yes, girl, we've been making headlines, so let's come take a tour of the Star Yak Ranch, finally. Oh, wow, so tone deaf right off the bat, Jeffree. People are already mad at you for slaughtering yaks, and you start off your video holding the taxidermied corpse of one of their babies? Oh, my mistake. Apparently that's just some sort of stuffed animal for grown adults. Maybe he's just gonna use that as an education model. Jeffrey, show us on the doll where you disembowel these beautiful creatures that you love so much. I happen to know, all comedy aside, that baby yaks don't look like that because if you go to the Yak Star Ranch website right now, it only redirects you to a Facebook page that shows a yak being born. So glam. Obviously the yak world is a little different from the beauty world because I used to work in social media for beauty and we tried to keep all sort of afterbirth off the screen. If we saw an animal writhing in pain while it, like a smaller mammal slurps out of its gurp, that's not gonna sell lipstick. But I guess it sells yak meat. Like seriously, this is, okay, whatever. Maybe it's beautiful and I'm just, I'm just trashy. I'm trashy for not wanting to see the placenta of a large breed animal. We already know Jeffree Star loves to flaunt his wealth and he seems to spare no expense when it comes to buying new things like getting a ranch set up. Like, he can't just have a gate. So that might seem like a really cool fence if you're a 2005 emo kid, but from a Yak's perspective, this must feel like you're entering the Death Star. Yaks are supposedly very intelligent animals, so they must see that logo and think, great, now not only am I being raised for food, but apparently they're also gonna straighten my bangs. When will the tragedy end? So Jeffrey catches us up a little bit. He's like, this has been a secret. Actually, it's not a secret. I've just been keeping it to myself because Wyoming is where I found peace. Wish I could say the same for 
all of the yaks you've encountered out there, but it seems like some of them are having a real stressful year. I don't know if you know, this is, Jeffrey's in his Joanne era, which for him is like farmer. He's like wearing a straw hat. <laughs> um, I have only a few people that help me on this ranch, but it's really mainly me and my best friend, Michael. I do have a few ranch hands, but I just, it's really me and my best friend doing all, all the work. I guess I'm confused. You're saying you and your best friend are the ones shoveling manure and expressing anal glands while those farm hands you hired are just standing around and watching? I feel like he was like, yeah, it's just basically me and Michael running this gigantic ranch single-handedly. I mean, yes, we have a hired staff who does whatever chores I don't feel like or that might ruin my Louis Vuitton. But besides that, I'm literally broke back fucking mountaining it out here. Next we get to meet some of Yak Star Ranch. I cannot say the name. Star Yak Ranch. I want to switch those around. Star Yak Ranches, Star Yaks. The Star Yaks are the ones that apparently, Jeffrey says like, these are the ones that I name and the ones that I raise for fiber or breeding, which to me is like, wait, so are you going to take the babies of these yaks and kill their babies? That's your explanation? Wow. Okay. He's like brushing their fiber and saying he plans to in the future use this fiber, sell it to the textile industry. So apparently the yak is a very resourceful, very useful creature. It's a whole mineral supplement. Yaks really need copper in their diet. So he'll just stand here for like 20, 30 minutes and just lick. <laughs> All my exes. <laughs> wow, I'm sorry to hear that all of your exes also had copper deficiencies. They must have had some really low body temperatures. With your cold, pale bodies, sharing a bed must have felt like sleeping in a drawer at the morgue. The most exhausting component of Jeffrey Star's humor for me is when he turns everything into a lazy reference for some relatively tame sex act he's performed. Like, don't use the words lick, suck, or blow around this one, or he'll make some obvious joke to remind you that he's had oral sex before, as though that makes him the edgiest person alive. Mama, I know people whose fetish is to turn themselves inside out and hang upside down in a dungeon. You're acting like you're the coolest kid in school because you have tattoos and gave a job. If you've ever been in any outpatient substance abuse program, you know that describes pretty much everyone. I do want to touch this yak fur. Luckily, I get to simulate the experience. <laughs> Look at all that. Now, the fiber on the neck is the most valuable. It's softer than cashmere. Feel that. Wow. Isn't that cool? That's crazy. What in the POV porn? I've never seen Jeffrey's camera operator get involved in the action like this. Am I supposed to put on virtual reality goggles so it can feel like I'm the one touching yak fiber? Because I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't wanna do that. While Jeffrey has found this new hobby of raising animals for food, I am constantly being reminded of how many other new hobbies and skills I've been able to learn on Skillshare, the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes classes that help you find new ways to stay creative or get inspired or add new skills to your repertoire. I love always sharpening my understanding of things in the digital space because it helps with my business, obviously, but then also Skillshare has so many classes geared towards self-care and relaxation and just improving my quality of life. For instance, I participated in the class Holistic Interior Design with Clear Studios and it inspired me to get a lighter bedspread and now my bedroom feels so much much bigger and brighter. I think Skillshare is such a great way to invest in yourself and your creative journey. That's why members from over 150 countries come together to find inspiration on the site. People often ask me how I can teach them to make YouTube videos, and guess what? There are plenty of Skillshare classes for photography, videography, editing, and social media. Also, if you're interested in improving your job skills or starting a side hustle, check out Skillshare courses like Start Your Creative of career with Sonia Rasula. If you've been curious to try Skillshare, then I've got the perfect deal for you. The first 1,000 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring. Now, are you ready for some yak meat. Apparently the reason these yaks, the special ones, are so docile and friendly is because Jeffrey or somebody goes out and spends time with them all the time, so they're social. And then sometimes when you're giving them a massage, they just casually fall asleep. <laughs> they really are such beautiful and adorable creatures. I can't wait to see what their muscle tissue looks like. That's when Jeffrey makes this effortless segue. Alright you guys, is this where we segue into my meat business? 
<laughs> oh my god, people are so crazy. I think city folk don't understand farming, Chris. City folk, bitch, you grew up in Orange County. Also, it seems a little condescending to imply that all of the people who take issue with you butchering animals are city slickers who don't understand farming. Vegetarians can live in towns too, King Joffrey. Don't tell me I don't understand farming. I've gone apple picking, I've taken the hayride, I've pet the weird goat. So I'm not a total stranger to what you got going on over there, Ronald McDonald. But guess what? After watching your video, getting all of the information, both sides of the story, I still still think it's weird that you both sell vegan lipstick and chop up animals to sell in your online meat store. Sorry, it's not clicking, it's not clicking. Come on, in every fucking phone call in the fucking world. But then I was shocked. I read some comments like, I thought meat came from the grocery store. I literally was like, that's not real, right? And then people in Wyoming were like, oh yeah, people think meat comes from the grocery store. And I'm like, Oh, well, don't worry, because now we know the truth. That meat actually comes from the dead carcasses of the large cattle that live on your property. So the truth will set you free. He's trying to make the point that all of his critics are just ignorant about where meat comes from. I think most people know that meat comes from factory farms, but they just probably don't expect one of those factory farms to be proudly owned and operated by the same YouTuber who makes their vegan concealer. I wonder if Jeffree Star has ever heard the term optics. You don't don't see McDonald's putting up their golden arches outside the actual house of horrors where the cows get their heads chopped off. It sullies the brand. So no matter how you position it with your like kind of diversion, it's gonna seem weird to many people that you're the Jeffree Star who sells pet toys and the Jeffree Star who shoots animals out on the range. It's not like you were born being a meat distributor. So it makes everything else you do seem inauthentic to have a pet business and and a meat business launch in the same year. Even the culture of uh, hunting and providing food for your family. And living in Wyoming, I've definitely learned the Wyoming way. Oh, he's just doing this to provide food for his family. Tell me, how many yaks do you have to kill to feed those nine teacup Pomeranians who can barely chew and would likely die if they didn't get their prescription eye drops three times a day? I'm pretty sure your whole family dines on Caesar's canine cuisine. So maybe don't use hunting and gathering as some sort of excuse for starting this venture. I worked in marketing. I understand what he's doing here. He's trying to make it seem like the whole issue is that people don't know enough to understand where meat comes from, but it also is not just that issue. Like some people aren't just meat eaters who don't think about their food. They're conscientious objectors who don't eat meat and don't want their brand owners being involved in the production of meat. He's never going to win those people over. But by only talking about this one issue and providing what sound like really soothing, reasonable facts by making it about whether the animals have names or whatever it gives us something to be like oh he explained it he explained it. it's like what did he explain not where all the blood from the yak murder goes i'm just saying yak meat is so amazing it's actually the leanest healthiest red meat in america and no one's talking about it for some reason everyone picked um beef and bison and yaks got just pushed to the the wayside in America. Are you trying to make us feel bad for excluding yaks from becoming a more mainstream meat? Newsflash star boy, animals don't think it's good news if other animals want to eat them. Do you think when chickens are waiting in line for the meat grinder, they feel famous and validated because of how much people love McNuggets? Maybe that's why they keep ripping out their own feathers in panic because they're just so happy. Jeffrey sort of addresses the fact that the news about the yak meat came out far later than his uh, talking about the Yak Star Ranch for yak products that were non-lethal, like milk, or, I guess milk, or I might have made that up, or fur, whatever. Yes, a long time ago, I did trademark the Star Yak Ranch for all sorts of things, fiber, breeding, butchering, everything. So yes, I do sell a vegan cosmetics brand, and I'm like, you guys, that has nothing to do with my Yak Ranch. <laughs> that is a whole separate company. Yeah, calm down, people. The only similarities between those two companies are the name and trademark, legal representation, CEO, and founder. But other than that, you're right, Jeffrey, there literally could not be a bigger difference between selling vegan skincare and selling yak steaks. I'm glad you also see where the cognitive dissonance is happening for the public. So Jeffrey basically explains that all of these yaks who have the pink tags and beautiful cute names, such as Starboy, tits, licking, licking, licking the ground. I don't know why they have names. They're literally 
on themselves and he's like that one's Versace I'm just kidding I love animals so he's like all of the ones who are going to be murdered are in a back pasture and not murder he says raised for food all of those are in a back pasture they don't have names they're not trained he shows us where they're all killed basically I guess or they might butcher them offsite but he shows where they're all housed and explains that he's gonna do a yak salon for the grooming of all of the pretty yaks that he loves also a lot of rich people problems like an aluminum shortage. Shut up. Oh, do you want to meet the death row inmates? <laughs> now behind me, these animals are going to actually to slaughter tomorrow. No, they are not uh, halter trained. They are not uh, named. These animals are now being finished with a grass and alfalfa mix right now. Oh, I thought you said they were being finished tomorrow with a bullet in the head. He said, these ones behind me are going to be killed tomorrow, but there's really no need to worry. We don't train them. We don't name them. We don't love them because that would be cruel. It's not like they're my beloved pets. They're just other, less attractive living creatures. We don't celebrate their birthdays. We don't look them in the eyes. They don't get very much sunlight. They get crowded into small areas. We hear them screaming in terror every night. So I don't know why these animal rights activists are all up on my ass. You're right, Jeffrey, it's a mystery. You're the victim here. Just like the yaks are the victim because we have been ignoring their delicious meat for so long. Speaking of, let's get a product shot in here, Jeffrey, because this is essentially a commercial for your frozen meat. 90% fat free. The red wine color is because yaks have a massive um, lung capacity because obviously they're used to high altitudes. Their, their red blood vessels are just different than other cattle. They're very sturdy. Why are you teaching us this as though sturdy blood vessels are something people would even want in their meat? Somehow Jeffrey's QVC sales pitch for this yak meat swings from having way too much technical talk that only farmers would care about to providing too much of an emotional connection to these special animals whose babies he's taking away and killing. He's like, yaks are softer than cash mirror smarter than a fifth grader when you look into their eyes you can see they have a soul and tomorrow they take a ride on my conveyor belt of death and that's the star yak stack star ranch make sure you check out their website and their facebook which is a facebook page if you want to see some wyoming locals be like good cow birthing babe <laughs> we are a long way from launching skin scrubs and lipsticks aren't we anyway make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more content on your favorite or most infamous influencers but most importantly if you're new to my channel I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here that way you never miss new videos from me I upload a two new ones every week so turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I'm shipping out some dried yak jerky for you to chew on also I've got merch available and a patreon where you can access exclusive bonus episodes and virtual watch parties I'm remembering the time we watched she's all that oh so iconic anyway you guys are all the greatest thank you so much for visiting Farmtown with me today. I will see you next time.